Hello everyone. Once a man whose marriage was in trouble sought the advice of his master. The master said, You must learn to listen to your wife. The man took this advice to heart and returned after a month and said, Master, I have learned to listen to every word my wife says. The master said with a smile, That's great. Now go home and listen to every word she doesn't say. Not everyone has the wisdom of this master. The Bible is composed of different kinds of literature, such as history, poetry, prophecy, parables, narratives, letters, and so on. Within the poetic section of the Bible, there are different styles of poetry written at different times in the history of Israel. In the Old Testament, there are five poetic books. 1. Song of Songs, which is about love and romance. 2. Psalms, which contains worship songs. 3. Job, which deals with the problem of human suffering and the affliction of the righteous. 4. Ecclesiastes, which points out the vanity of everything. And 5. Proverbs which is a collection of practical instructions for daily life. These five books are classified as wisdom writings. Why? Because teachings from the wisdom writings are just as relevant and applicable today as they were when they were written over 2000 years ago. If you have never read these books, Please read them. You will learn many practical lessons, as I have said, about romance and love, worship and praise to God, pain and suffering in life, excessive attachment to earthly life, and teachings for everyday relationship. The book of Proverbs was probably written and compiled sometime between the 10th and 6th centuries before Christ. It is a collection of sayings and instructions of King Solomon who was known for his wisdom and many other writers as well. In today's text, we hear praises and exaltations for wisdom. The writer details poetically the origin, role and acts of wisdom. He regards wisdom more than a concept or a virtue. He sees wisdom as a person. He attributes human qualities to the wisdom, which is invisible and incomprehensible. Wisdom is personified. In fact, wisdom is the speaker in the text. Wisdom speaks for herself. Now, let us not debate about why wisdom is referred as a feminine entity. What we do know is that wisdom is depicted as a woman in the first chapter of the Proverbs and, and in many other books in the Hebrew Bible. The first part of the text Wisdom describes her existence before the creation of the world. Thus says the wisdom of God, The Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth at the first before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains of springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills I was brought forth. While as yet the earth 
and, the, and fields were not made, nor the first clouds of the world, before the heavens, skies, foundations of the earth. In short, wisdom says that before the skies, heavens, earth, mountains, hills, creatures, dust, time and space were formed, she was there. She sees herself as the firstborn of God's ways. She has been around since the beginning of time. In the second part of the text, wisdom describes her presence with God and creation. She says, Then was I beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the human race. In brief, wisdom sees herself being at God's side at the time of the creation of the world, communicating with him, helping him, advising him, working with him in creating the world, enjoying every bit of the creation, delighting him by her presence, and especially finding delight in the creation of human race. No wonder why she found delight in the human race. We read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our own image to our likeness. Our refers to God and wisdom. Therefore, the wisdom who has been around since begin before the beginning of time and who embodies truth, insight, knowledge, power, strength and love comes from and is woven into God. The wisdom described in today's reading is not the wisdom in human terms, sound advice or good judgment, but it is God's wisdom. No human being can possess God's wisdom wholly, but they can seek her. How? The person or wisdom who was before God, with God and in God, is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Wisdom is a personification of Christ. Wisdom is the forerunner of Christ. In the prologue of the Gospel of John, we read, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being. Not one thing came into being except through Him. I must point out here that until the 4th century, there was a great controversy regarding the nature of Christ. Was he God and human, or was he just human? Some church fathers, particularly a charismatic priest named Arius, believed that if wisdom or Jesus Christ was created or begotten or brought forth as mentioned in the scriptures, then Jesus cannot be God. In fact, Arius argued that Jesus' words and deeds revealed the likeness of God, but he was not fully the same as God. Arius' contention undermined the Christian doctrine of Trinitarian God, one God in three persons, which has been part of our faith since the time of Jesus' death and resurrection. The writings of the disciples of Jesus and St. Paul prove such faith existed much before the time of Arius. So the Council of Nicaea was called, and after prolonged theological discussions and debates, the Council proclaimed that we believe in the Blessed Trinity. The Council ruled that the wisdom 
or Jesus Christ existed before creation regardless of how one pictures her or him coming into being. Today, what we know is that the Nicene Creed, a profession of faith, is an important part of the Holy Eucharist. Friends, why do I share these thoughts with you today? It is very important for you and me to understand the mystery of God and His Word with the help and guidance of those who have gone before us. Many people have spent very many years to study the scriptures, traditions, beliefs and doctrines so that we all, through their writings and explanations, can better understand God's Word today. However, the doubts and controversies have not gone away. There are many, including Christians, still with us who believe that Jesus was just a wonderful man or a moral teacher or a great prophet or famous miracle worker, but he was not God. So they argue that it is enough for us to be a good and kind man like Jesus and we do not have to profess him as God. Many refuse to believe in the uniqueness of Jesus. Many people do not believe that the Bible is God's holy word that teaches us about Jesus, wisdom itself. It is vital for us to realize that if you want to know the wisdom of God, then we must seek wisdom that is, Jesus himself. Let us listen to Jesus, not only to what he is saying, but also to what he is not saying. What he is not saying to us? He is not saying lots of things to us. He is not saying why there is human suffering, why there is death, why the righteous suffer and so on. In today's Gospel, he warns us, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you to all truth. In other words, to those who humbly seek him like little children do, he does reveal the things hidden from the learned and the clever to them. Let us pray always, like St. Arnold Jansen, the founder of my congregation, Divine Word Missionaries, who said, May the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief vanish before the light of the Word and the Spirit of grace, and may the heart of Jesus live in the hearts of all. Amen. God bless you.